Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with fire roasted cherry tomato salsa. That's right, show me someone that plants cherry tomatoes and I'll show you somebody that has too many cherry tomatoes to eat. And if you're one of those people, there's no better way to use up all those extras than by making this delicious and dangerous looking salsa. And for whatever reason, if you didn't plant cherry tomatoes, don't worry. They're super easy to find at the market, especially this time of year when they're extra, extra sweet. So to get started, we're gonna take a foil lined baking sheet and drizzle on a little bit of olive oil and brush that all over. And once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and dump on our cherry tomatoes. Those of course have been rinsed and drained and the little green things taken off the top. I'm actually using a variety called Sweet 100s, which if you can find are really, really good for this. And then to that, we're gonna add one onion that I've just roughly chopped and we'll place those pieces in and about the tomatoes. Now, since this is all gonna get blended later, please don't worry too much about precision cutting. And then besides the tomatoes and the onions, we're also gonna do some garlic cloves, but leave the skin on, leave the paper on the clove. Okay, we'll peel that off after this is fire roasted. And then last but not least, I'm also gonna do some sliced jalapeno, which I've partially seeded. So I cut them in the thick rings, whatever seeds fell out, I left out. Whatever seeds stuck in, I left in. And we'll scatter those in the mix. And that's pretty much it. And then what our game plan is here, we're gonna put this under a hot broiler until these vegetables are well charred. And for the purposes of this recipe, we will refer to that as fire roasting. And you wanna get these veggies pretty close to the heat. So what I like to do and what you might have to do is put a pan on the rack first. So when I slide my veggies in, they're nice and close to the heat source. So find something that gives you that perfect distance. But anyway, we're gonna slide those vegetables in and broil those on high until very well charred. So let's go ahead and take a peek. This has been about five minutes. And you might be thinking, hey, those look perfect. They got a nice little char going. They look nicely roasted. No, these are not even close. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn the pan and put those back in. Because when I say charred, I mean charred. They need to look like this. All right, the tops of those tomatoes are gonna get black. Same with the onions. The onions are gonna kind of soften up. Those garlic cloves are gonna have been roasted in the skin. And then all we need to do is let this sit for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle. Because what we need to do before we blend this is pull off those garlic skins. Now, of course, I didn't take my own advice because I was in a hurry. And I peeled these while they were hot, thereby burning my fingertips. So do as I say, not as you just saw me do. But anyway, let those veggies cool a little bit and then hopefully painlessly remove those garlic skins. And at that point, we're gonna transfer everything into a blender. And of course, be sure after you transfer the vegetables to add any accumulated juices. Oh, that stuff's amazing. Do not throw that away. So we'll pour that in. And then before we blend this, let's add the rest of the ingredients. So first up, I'm gonna squeeze in the juice of one lime. And I know because of my bad editing, it only looks like I'm putting half in, but I actually squeeze the whole thing in there. And then we will season this up with some salt, good amount, and some freshly ground black pepper. We'll also do a few shakes of cayenne. It doesn't need it, but we're gonna put it anyway. And I apologize in between each of these ingredients, I keep bumping the table. Hey, I got big hips, what can I say? I also want a very small pinch of dry oregano, just a little bit, and a little pinch of ground cumin, or cumin. Depends on where you're from. And then last but not least, a nice handful of fresh cilantro leaves, and that is ready to blend. So we're gonna head over to the blender. And by the way, blender makers, you're putting too many buttons on these things. We just got a new blender, which I'm still trying to figure out. I mean, come on, we're making salsa. I'm not trying to launch a nuclear sub. Why do I need all these buttons? But anyway, let's try number four. And that seems to be working. Although with anything like this, generally it's a good idea to pulse it on and off. That tends to ensure even blending. Although one big tip, while the pulsing is a great technique for something like this, you really wanna make sure your lid's on tight. But I did not have my lid on tight, which as you can see produced what we call wall salsa, which you know what, wasn't that bad. Just kidding, I did not eat that, allegedly. But anyway, to finish this off, let's take a spatula and scrape it down. Give it one more quick blend. And that fire roasted cherry tomato salsa is basically done. So let's go ahead and transfer that into a bowl and you can see how gorgeous that looks. And by the way, it's gonna get even more gorgeous because there's a lot of air bubbles in there now. So as this sets, it's gonna get even darker and more sexy looking. Now, obviously at this point, you're gonna to wanna to taste. You can adjust the seasonings a little bit, especially salt, but you really do wanna do the final adjustments once this is cold, which is the next step. We really wanna wrap this up and put this in the fridge for a few hours to develop the flavors. Okay, yes, you can serve it right away, but much, much, much better if you let it sit for a few hours, okay? So I did let mine sit and mature. I pulled it out, I tasted it again, I adjusted for salt, as I mentioned earlier. And of course, we're gonna transfer that into some kind of appropriate serving container, which as you can see, I surrounded with chips and garnished with a little sprig of oregano. 
We gave cilantro the day off. And finally, that fire-roasted tomato salsa is done. I just love how this looks. It just looks like it's going to taste awesome, which it does. Charring those vegetables really brings out a tremendous amount of flavor. And as good as this is on plain chips, wait until you see what we do with this next week. Oh yeah, major, major spoiler alert. Very, very soon, we're going to be using this fire-roasted salsa on our official Food Wishes version of carnitas. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, I really hope you give this amazing salsa a try. And yes, that is how you pronounce it, salsa. I mean, come on, who are you going to believe, me or your Spanish teacher? But anyway, no matter how you pronounce it, you definitely should make it. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info, as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.